Hi, my name is Brianna. I'm 23 years old. I live in Croswell, Michigan, and this is a story of how Jesus Christ redeemed me, set me free, and saved my life. So yes, I grew up in a very tiny, teeny little town named Croswell, Michigan. It is surrounded by cornfields and farmland, has one stoplight, surrounded by other tiny little desolate little towns. I grew up um, with a household of two of my mother and my father. I do have a sister, but she is 10 years older than I am. So because of this, I very much felt like an only child growing up, and I'm sure she had similar feelings until... I came along, um, but because of this, I lived a very um, only child lifestyle. My dad actually worked um, very long, strenuous hours when I was a child. He would do this thing called swing shift, so he would work a week of nights or a week of days, but regardless of what schedule he was on, I very rarely saw him because he was working 12-hour shifts. I would be off at school for the majority of the day, and then when I would return home, he would either be sleeping for his shift or um, just about to leave, so I, I very much didn't feel like I saw my father very regularly as a child because he was um, providing for his family. And it is important to note that my dad, because of his, just his upbringing and his work schedule, he did have faith, but it was um, very lukewarm at the time. And I'm so, so ecstatic to say that he has grown in his faith, that he's no longer lukewarm. Um, but he, he did try to incorporate God into our lifestyle. He would bring me to church um, sometimes, but I never ever felt like I left church knowing the true gospel, knowing the Jesus that I know now. I never felt like I had God in my right pocket or that I had God um, in my heart with me. So because of the separation from God in our home, not having the Lord um, as its beating heart um, a lot, we under went a just a lot of trauma and anguish because of this um so my mom she also worked to, to provide for us and my mom took very um well care of her home and for me um, but my mom struggled and battled with an agonizing amount of depression and anxiety all throughout her life and even when i was a child i could recognize that my mom was battling these things because it was just so palpable it was like a heavy cloud that followed her throughout her life and I could see it and I could recognize it and my mom the only knew that she, the only way she knew how to combat these feelings um was to drink so throughout my whole entire childhood my mom was just in complete bondage to her alcoholism and if you are a child of an alcoholic or maybe your spouse is an alcoholic you know the just sheer amount of terror and embarrassment and shame and dread and all these things that come along with being a child of an alcoholic or having an alcoholic in your life um it's 
it's very it's very scary it's very sad um, and if we do not cope with these feelings they follow us throughout our whole life until we make peace with them um, but as a child I was a victim of my mom's alcoholism and um, because of this it just really gave way to a lot of terrible things happening in our family um, the one thing that really sticks out to me because of my mom's alcoholism and her not being properly treated for her anxiety and her depression and having that separation from God and not to spoil the rest of my testimony, but my mom does eventually um, gain real sobriety and she does finally um, accept the Lord into her heart. So, but when she didn't have that, when she had separation from God, and her alcoholism was just at an all-time high. She really was so oppressed by the enemy that he took away her um, feelings to love. So now that I'm a mother, I couldn't imagine going through this. But my mom, when I was around 11, she could not feel the love of me or my sister or my father. And it was just an emptiness, an emptiness that was so hard to digest that she um, tried to unalive herself and my father came into my room one afternoon I just I just got off the bus that day and it was actually very um, I thank the Lord so much for my dad even being home to um, to be there for all this um, but my dad came into my room he said Brianna your mom took some pills I've called 911 and at 11 how do you how do you deal with that? How do you even sit with that? Um, so I began to pray. I began to pray and I began to bargain with God and I asked God to save my mom and I would no longer be mean to her and I would keep my room clean because, you know, I'm an adolescent. I'm not fully understanding the weight of it all. And it's important to know that um, during this time, I was a very, very combative child um, and I continued to be a combative child, but I was combative and angry and just so resentful of my mom and her alcoholism that a part of me really loathed my mom because when she was drunk, she was night and day different than who she was when she was sober. Um, so my mom, by the mercy of our Lord, um, it was an unsuccessful um, attempt and she was able to return home, but because of her attempt, and at this time, my grandfather had died. Um, two of my neighbors had passed away, and a young girl that I went to school with had tragically died. So I'm facing death for the first time as a young person, and it really was all-consuming. It was terif It was a terrifying thought to really sit and chew on, and it felt like just the spirit of death just pff, on my shoulders at all times. And coupled with this, I'm also thinking like, how am I having these thoughts? How am I here? Who created me? And it would just boggle my mind in a way that really left me uncomfortable and really left me feeling so dreadful. <laughs> it was just horrid. Um, so my mom inevitably took me to therapy because she recognized something in me that she was dealt with, you know, her whole entire life. She saw that I was prone to sadness and I was really prone to anxiety and I just I just uh, was so uncomfortable in my skin and so she took me to a therapy um, and therapy eventually segued me into visiting a psychiatrist and my mom was doing what she thought was best at the time but now both my mom and I know that um, me being on pharmaceutical drugs only enhanced um, all of my symptoms and made them 10 times worse <laughs> but at the time it was trying to find um, a cocktail of medications that we could tweak and I would try different ones and go off of some and it was always this trial and error um, process of finding the right drug that would help me because at this point I'm just battling um, a great amount of depression and I'm battling panic attacks and it was just, it was a horrid, horrid, lonely part of my life. And I felt, because of this, I felt very ostracized from my peers because I'm the odd girl that's, you know, so emo and just um, so agonizingly, agonizingly depressed. So because of this, so, um, so coupled with my demonic oppression, <laughs> Um, separation from God and just being on a cocktail of medications I would harm myself 
and because of me harming myself my mom would actually keep me home from school for long durations of time because she didn't want to send me to school and you know have cps involved <laughs> um so um i don't know why i laugh it's just it's so odd looking back on all of this because it's like a fever dream that i dreamt one afternoon because it's just so night and day different from the life i live now walking with christ but um my mom would keep me home for long durations of time because I was just battling an agonizing amount of depression and I had um, harmed myself so she didn't want to send me to school in that condition. So I just really rotted in my room for a really long time and the internet became something that I just, oh my gosh, loved and obsessed with. Um, so I was on Tumblr and Instagram and Facebook and the algorithm, the demon algorithm really targeted me because one thing about the enemy is that he targets girls just like me um, who felt very ostracized that had a broken um, mother and home life and somebody who was dealing with anxiety and depression. I was the perfect candidate um, for him to suck me into witchcraft because uh, witchcraft, all teenage girls are searching a sense of power and identity and um, purpose and I found all of that in witchcraft. So I'm learning about witchcraft and my mom, again at the time, very blind to the enemy's devices. My dad did not want to um, enable this at all. I'm sure him and my mom had argued about these things, but my mom um, had the bigger voice and eventually said that I could do all these things because at the time it was just a maybe a thing that would um, help me <laughs> just anything to help me so my mom bought me my first tarot deck she bought me my first pendulum and all these things made complete sense to me because I always knew that there was a paper thin veil right before my eyes that I could feel. I knew that there were entities on the other side. I knew it. I could feel it. I could sense it. I always had the gift of um, um, feeling spirits um, around me, what I thought they were spirits at the time. Um, so I found witchcraft. Witchcraft found me, and I just went headfirst into it. Um, my mom had taken me to a... Um, psychic at there's this place if you're from Michigan you may know what it's called it's called Gibraltar's I don't think it's Gibraltar's anymore but at the time you could buy a katana um, and a tiger shirt and get your cards read and get a pizza pizza on your way out it was just this um, crazy place to go and my mom took me there and I met with a psychic for the first time and she told me three things that really really stuck out to me to this day first the psychic said to her or the demons spoke through her to tell me that I was very gifted. She said, you are more powerful than I am. You can do exactly what I'm doing. You just need to learn how to, how to channel it. And then she said to me that I need to get my upheaval of emotions under control and ground myself so I won't end up in the hospital because I'm prone to heart problems, she said. If I don't get everything under wraps, that I will suffer the consequence of being in the hospital and having heart problems. And then the last thing she said to me, she said, who's Sam? And at the time, I had this girlfriend that I was talking to on Tumblr who was also a young girl who was interested in the occult and the paranormal and witchcraft, and her name was Sam. So I said, yeah, like, I have a friend named Sam, and she said to me that we were sisters in a past life and that we were always going to find each other, that we made an oath with each other, that we were always going to be sisters and that we were never going to leave each other. So I left this psychic meeting. I left Gibraltar's feeling like this was the point in my life where really I had a huge shift because finally I had somebody validate, yes, you are different. Yes, you are powerful. Yes, you can sense things. Yes, you do have this gift. And I'm putting air quotations, gift about you. And the things she said just all made perfect, perfect, coherent sense to me. Um, and again, I'm still struggling so much with anxiety and depression. And I'm months away from getting a bipolar one disorder um, diagnosis. So I am just 
really undergoing a lot of torment. So when I could put all of my energy towards witchcraft, it did like my feelings subsided for a little because that's the thing about witchcraft is um, when the enemy wants you to think that you have more power, more power than you do and that you are able to heal yourself and you are able to manipulate the things around you to gain your desired outcome. Um, so I started to really just make witchcraft my whole entire purpose and my whole entire identity and I very much was that cliche weird girl who um, wore crystals around my neck and pentagrams and always had um, tarot cards on me and pendulums and was always feverishly writing in my uh, grimoire, my spell book and me and Sam were always together doing elaborate spells with each other and we very much marketed ourselves as these these witches and it was our brand and we got a lot of validation because of this and our egos really fed off of it and unfortunately though me and sam really bonded with each other on such an intimate level because of all the witchcraft that we were doing um our demons were just having a um, relationship with each other so it was a very tumultuous relationship we were always obsessed with each other and then um no, 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 no longer being friends with each other and it was just this up down up down up down um, but when we were friends together we were always doing um, spells under the pale moonlight we were always um, burning herbs and burning our affirmations for the upcoming moon cycle and I loved that finally I had identity I had purpose and I love that people found me to be alluring and mysterious because of my um my witchcraft that I put out into the world. Um, so that was my whole entire high school career and I'm still dealing with a massive amount of anxiety and depression and now I'm um, diagnosed with bipolar 1 disorder so I truly felt like I was going to serve a lifetime sentence of dread <laughs> and anguish um, and witchcraft. I would feel like it would be working but the only thing it was doing was leading me down a darker and darker road because i've heard a lot of witches and ex new agers say that the enemy is always going to take you farther than you first anticipated so my witchcraft first started as something you know to communicate with the spirits that i very much knew were real and to combat my um, dread that i was undergoing and then it then it went to now i'm doing blood rituals with my girlfriend samantha and I now know that to be such a mockery of what the Lord did for us on the cross because Jesus was the last sacrifice, the last perfect sacrificial lamb, and he was the last atonement for all of our sins. So the enemy was quite literally mocking not only us, but the Lord through having us do these um, blood rituals with each other. So um, my life just got darker and darker. Um, and now when I'm a teen and, um, now when I'm a late teen, I am not only doing witchcraft and I'm on a cocktail of pharmaceutical drugs to, um, combat my diagnoses, um, I'm now experimenting with, um, a large amount of marijuana and doing other drugs and, um, not to mention all the anti-anxiety medications I was on was not safe to give to um, a teenager that had unregulated access to them um, and I was drinking from time to time and I was just oh my goodness I was just truly going down this path of going into um, psychosis because I was just I had so many of these substances and all this witchcraft and all this demonic oppression just raining down in me constantly and something that witchcraft in the new age teaches um, the practice or the um, practitioners is that everything is a sign from the universe every single thing if you see two birds in the sky if you see 11 11 on your fridge if you see um, <laughs> someone wearing purple it's all a sign from the universe and I would see these things and this truly made me delusional truly delusional unsafe to myself um, and it was agonizing <laughs> so i was inevitably hospitalized because of this and just my tendencies to want to hurt myself and just my um 
me being so, so, so depressed. So I was hospitalized for the first time um, when I was 17, I believe. And what's so crazy to look back on is when I was in this mental institution, um, I had given one of the nurses a tarot card reading, something that they definitely should not have been enabling and watering the seed of, but they did. And I just thought that looking back, that's absolutely bonkers because I was there to get help, not to, um, not to be doing all that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was my, that was my, um, whole teenage years was, um, witchcraft and, pharmaceuticals and being hospitalized and still harming myself and still being on all these drugs and just never having like never having stability at all um so now i'm in my early adulthood and my dad had um really walked away from his lukewarmness and was really trying to have a more prominent relationship with the Lord. So he would invite me to church from time to time. And he never got angry at me when I was like, Dad, I'm a witch. No, he always had a lot of patience with me. Um, and I really love him so much for that. So my dad would invite me to church. And there was he, the Lord was planting seeds in my life because my dad would say things to me that would really boggle my brain and get me thinking. And he would say to me, why do you worship the creations opposed to the creator of all? And I'm like, well, that is my way of worshiping the creator um, is using all of his creations to um, give glory to him. Because I definitely like knew of Jesus, but it was this um, made up Jesus that I had made up and cultivated in my head that was never going to have me um, have a repentant heart or have faith in him. Um, and it was just another delusion of mine. But, my, but these seeds that my dad was planting in my life started to roll around in my brain. And my mom at this point had real sobriety. And she would talk about, Brianna, like, I no longer feel depressed. I no longer feel anxious. I feel the wind around me. Like, I feel alive. And I feel just how everything is alive. And she'd be talking to me. And I'm like, well, that's, that's great. <laughs> and a part of me really longed for that. And I knew it was because she was having this relationship with God for the first time in her life. And it was really magnificent what the Lord um, did for her and delivered her from. Um, so now it is 2020 and we all know what happens in 2020, the pandemic. So I was home. I was living with my parents at the time and my boyfriend, who is now my husband at the time, and my mom. <laughs> She um, was watching a lot of conspiracy videos that I know are not conspiracy videos anymore. But these videos would be talking about um, the elites and our government officials doing all of this crazy demonic witchcraft. And I knew all the symbolisms that they were projecting out into the world. Um, and I knew like all these things that they were doing because I had such an extensive history of being in witchcraft. So the Lord was giving me spiritual eyes to see what they were doing. And I knew in my spirit that they were serving a different God than the God I wanted to serve. I knew that they were serving the devil. I knew it. And there's no other way to say, say this other than the Lord was giving me spiritual eyes and waking up his daughter. Um, and giving me the gift of discernment. So I'm seeing all this unravel and I'm starting to realize, oh, this world's evil. This world is absolutely atrocious. Just everything that was happening um, in the world at this time really proved that to be true. Um, so I'm recognizing all this, but I'm still like battling in my head. No, I'm not that kind of like witch i'm a kitchen witch and i'm a white witch and i just love the moon and you know it's it's just for my healing i don't do witchcraft on people and it's just uh i was like the devil and the god were just fighting for my soul at this point and the lord was still planting little seeds in my head um so now fast forward to 2021 um me and my now husband um are living in our home um, but unfortunately, my alcoholism had just really had its grasp on me. And this really unsettled me because I knew what alcohol 
could do. I knew that alcohol could ruin families. I knew that al what road alcoholism would lead me down if I wasn't careful. Um, but it, its grasp on me was just so strong. Alcohol gave me confidence. Alcohol um, allowed me to not feel anxious. Alcohol let me be the girl in my head that I wanted to be. So I just went all in in my alcoholism. And as I am like going down the road of alcoholism, witchcraft was losing its luster to me. And I was no longer friends with my girlfriend, Samantha, who we were doing all this witchcraft together. So I was just left to my own devices and witchcraft was losing its appeal to me. It's, it's a mystery to me. And the Lord would tell me things like, does this rock really give you powers? Do these herbs all mix together? Do they really do what they're advertising that they're going to do? And it was a really hard thing for me to accept because it was my whole personality for years and years and years. So when the Lord started to tell me these things, it was like, mm, I'll keep that, I'll keep that in the back of my head. But when the enemy could not find me doing a massive amount of witchcraft, he found me in my alcoholism. And I was a very mean drunk. I was a very mean spirited person. All I cared about was being you know drunk my next drink and I was selfish and it was just a very horrid time for not only me but for those around me and I take a full accountability of every action I did when I was drunk um but yeah so on December 2nd of 2021 everything every single thing came to the surface it all bubbled up um and I was extraordinarily abusive to my now husband and just cursing at him and accusing him of things and just being so cruel. Um, and I really, truly wanted to take my life that night. I just felt, what is, th what's the point? Like, I just felt a shell of myself. I felt so terrible. Um, and I didn't take my life. But the next morning, my husband says to me, Brianna, you are ugly when you drink. And he didn't mean it in the way I was unattractive. He meant you are just cruel. You are mean. You are selfish. You are embarrassing. You are unsafe to yourself and to others. And I knew then I have a real problem. I have a problem that is bigger than me. And I knew that I was powerless to alcohol. I knew that I was an alcoholic. I knew that I was like my mom. I knew it. So I had four months of very, very, very shaky sobriety. And I was massively depressed during this time because I wasn't um, using my vice to cope with everything. So I was just so, 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 so lonesome because I truly didn't have any friends because the little amount of friends I had would drink and smoke and do all these things that I was really no longer doing. So I was just alone. And what I like to say is that God brought me back to... or. God brought me to AA, and AA brought me back to God, and AA is Alcoholics Anonymous, and um, in AA, they teach you these 12 steps to healing, and the last one is um, find a higher power, and in AA, I don't want to get into it, but they teach you that it can be any higher power, um, and I really, truly feel like that does such a disservice, because the only higher power that is ever going to lead to anything worth having is Jesus. But I knew, I knew it. I knew in my spirit that I needed a God to help me. And I know that I needed to lean on something bigger than me because I've tried everything else. I've tried witchcraft. I've tried um, healing myself by the moon, healing myself by the powers of the lake. Like I've done, it, I've done it all. I've been on every pharmaceutical drug that you could possibly imagine. I've done it all. So the Lord, there's no other way to say that the Lord was just softening my heart and preparing my heart to finally accept Jesus. Um, and at this time, I was actually pregnant. I conceived my first child. And it, that was, if you're a parent, if you're a mom, you know somewhat of the anxiety um, of having a baby in your womb and just the uncertainty of it all. And someone at an AA meeting uh, said one time, and this so stuck with me, um, and he prayed and he said, Lord, have this be, um, 
have this be a reason for me to believe in something that my eyes cannot see, that you are God and I am not. And that's what I needed to hear my whole life. I'm not God. I cannot heal myself. I did not create myself. I did not, I did not, I did not, I did not. I need a creator. I need a savior. So I finally, finally listened to the call and listened to the knock on the door from Jesus. And the Lord had me throw away all of my witchcraft stuff. Everything that I've cultivated over years of being in witchcraft in the new age, I got rid of hundreds of dollars worth of things, um, all my spell bottles that I had created, every amulet, every treasure, every everything, and I wiped it clean out of my home. And when I did that, I was finally able to read the Bible. I was finally able to read the gospel and to learn about the story of Jesus and finally have it sink into my spirit what the Lord did when he died on the cross for me and for you. And he had you in mind and me in mind when he laid on that cross. So <laughs> um, the Lord truly woke me up. I did nothing. <laughs> Not me but christ in me <laughs> so um yeah so i was baptized um in august of um 2023 when my baby was six months old and the lord had actually given me this beautiful dream right before i was baptized where he gave me this dream where i was being baptized in my dream and when i was underwater i felt the weight of all of my sins i felt the weight every single evil thing I have ever, ever done or ever even thought of doing. I felt the weight of it. And when I came back up, I was clean. I was white as the driven snow. I was a new creation in Christ and no exaggeration. That's exactly how my baptism went. And my father actually baptized me um, in his backyard of the lake. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful moment between me and the God who saved me. So who I was before Christ isn't even comparable to who I am now. I was always a very angry, mean-spirited, jealous, envious, cruel, just unstable person who, um, like I said, I suffered with um, panic attacks and self-harming and depression and bipolar disorder and all these different things. Now I suffer with none of it. I'm free. I am truly freed by the blood. Um, and it's been just a marvelous um, thing that the Lord has done for me. Um, and now I'm married. We made our, um, me and my husband made our relationship official finally in the eyes of the Lord this past fall. And I'm just loving being a mother to my beautiful baby girl. And I have um, a great amount of girlfriends in Christ whom I just love. And I'm reunited with my girlfriend, Sam, who was also miraculously and radically saved. And I can't even empathize enough with, like, if you're listening and you are in witchcraft and you are in alcoholism, you need a savior. And that savior is Jesus Christ. So one thing I want people to know about Jesus is that he is the name above all names. He is the creator of all the same God who created the ripples in the lake and snowflakes and sunsets. Made you, made every hair on your head, knows everything that you bear in your heart and he wants all of you. He wants to radically transform you and I promise you, you can leave everything behind and be made new again in Jesus Christ. So praise God, praise God, praise Yahweh. I am just so in love and I pray that whoever is watching this will also just fall so much in love with Jesus Christ.